the former Late Show host's new series is off to a puzzlingly shaky start. With no shortage of daytime and late-night programs to go around these days, the excitement around David Letterman's new Netflix series, My Next Guest Needs No Introduction, has been a testament to his titanic position within the talk show sphere. A gifted broadcaster and hallowed comedian, Letterman's series promised to be a rich meal where often the late-night sphere from which he departed in 2015 can feel like a series of ephemeral snacks. On traditional televised talk series, the interviews are shorter and more promotional, politicians looking for exposure with a certain audience, actors promoting movies or, more recently, defending themselves against allegations of unsavory conduct, and, occasionally, authors hawking a book. Letterman's show, on the other hand, promised to go deeper, intimate, in-depth interviews with whomever Letterman deemed interesting, regardless of the topic of the day. Unfortunately, the series fails to live up to that mission with its first episode, which debuted on Netflix Friday. Letterman's sit-down with Barack Obama revealed very little that has not been widely known about the former president for years, and although their conversation yearned to be topical, flitting from Russian interference with American politics, to racism, to voting rights, neither mentioned Donald Trump by name. My next guest's format is largely what fans likely expected, Letterman and his guests speak on a sparse, unadorned stage before a live audience. The talk is interwoven with a field piece Letterman did, in which he walks across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama with Georgia Congressman John Lewis. The closest Letterman came to calling out the current president was when he asked Lewis, without being just flat out specific about it, how big a setback is the current administration to civil rights. At times like these, Letterman's avoidance of the T word verges on awkwardness. It's unclear whether Letterman and his guests agreed beforehand not to mention the president or not, but if referencing Trump was always off the table, one has to wonder why Letterman chose to focus on the subjects that he did. Apart from a few more personal discussions of subjects already widely covered, such as Obama's childhood and his book, Dreams from My Father, the bulk of the interview centered on current events and issues. For instance, the two discussed Russian interference in American media and politics, as Obama put it, one of the biggest challenges we have to our democracy is the degree to which we don't share a common baseline of facts. What the Russians exploited, but it already here, is we are operating in completely different information universes. If you watch Fox News, you are living on a different planet than you are if you listen to NPR, as Letterman asked Lewis how big of a setback he thinks we're enduring. A photo of the deadly Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia appeared on screen, but Letterman never directly referenced it. As Obama discussed how voter suppression is, in many ways, built into American democracy, neither mentioned, say, the reports of voter suppression during Alabama's recent election, or current Attorney General Jeff Sessions' record in that vein. Although Letterman is too experienced and too right by nature to engage in outright platitudes, his series' premiere feels like a lot of generalities and old news masquerading as something more profound. In all fairness, interviewing a person like Obama is tricky, it can be difficult to find subjects that others have not thoroughly explored multiple times over. It will be worth sticking around to find out how Letterman relates to his upcoming subjects, George Clooney, Malala Yousafzai, Jay-Z, Tina Fey and Howard Stern. But this is Obama's first televised interview since leaving office. Surely, there should have been some new material to be mined from this. The expectations will likely be a little different, as will the range of topics the interviews can cover. While it's unsavory for a former commander-in-chief to bash a sitting president, entertainers and activists are under no such obligation, Letterman certainly has not held back about Trump in previous public outings since leaving the air, saying in July that Trump's behavior is insulting to Americans, still is that. Expectation of propriety really a satisfactory answer to why this interview was so bland on both sides. Yes, it would be understandable if Obama refused to badmouth the new commander-in-chief out of a sense of propriety, despite the fact that Trump would never pay him the same courtesy. But if that was the case, why not focus on more fun, personal anecdotes, like the delightful story of Sasha pulling her father up to dance to Prince despite his decidedly dad-like dance moves. My guess is Letterman wanted to focus on something deeper, but to do that, both the interviewer and interviewee need to be willing to really go there. Both need to be candid. Both need to be brave enough to speak about Trump.
as galling as it can be for hosts who would likely love to move on to a new subject, the president and his administration have permeated almost every aspect of American life. To avoid mentioning him at this point is to avoid having a real conversation about the times in which we live and wasn't real conversation what this show was all about in the first place.